Hey, hey, hey. Ta for another out of this world story from our space. What happens when we sweep so much under the rug that eventually the dust bunnies we've been ignoring finally come up for air? Well, they become a lot scarier and harder to maintain the second time around. Today on our space, we'll learn it's best to face the problem before those dust bunnies evolve into something we can't handle. Up first, an OP takes responsibility for his past actions. I, 30 male, caught wife, 31 female, being unfaithful a couple years ago. So I'm going to try and explain the best I can in hopes to get advice. I'm a 30 male, and my wife is 31 female. A little backstory first. I met my wife in high school, and we got together, and we're happy. We've been together for 14 years, and I've been married for 12 years. After we got married, we had three beautiful children, 12 female, 8 female, and 7 male. A couple years ago, I started noticing that wife got pretty distant and acting weird. Before this, I had some bedroom kinks. Well, we would have sex. She became distant and acted weird. And I knew this because we'd been together for so long. Anyways, one night, while she was sleeping, I had this itching feeling to take her phone. So I did. I checked messages, nothing. And then I checked Facebook Messenger. And this is where my heart sank to my stomach. I found conversations with her friend about a guy who I will call Jack. She would talk about how I was in the bedroom and all my secrets. I feel as though whatever goes in the bedroom should stay there. Though so apparently, she took a fantasy I had and decided to act on it in real life behind my back. This went on for months, and at some point, she met up with Jack. Her friend was disapproving of it, by the way. So I wake her up, mind you, that was maybe at 3 a.m., to confront her as she said nothing other than sorry. I couldn't get it all out of her at once, but she admitted that she'd met up with Jack once, but I find that hard to believe. Anyway, I tell her that she needs to block Jack, and she did. I was all over the place on as my emotions got the best of me. I said, go ahead and continue as you would normally, and she didn't hesitate to re-add him as a friend. I got mad at this. She said that he's a good friend, and she didn't want to lose him. So days pass, and I decided to try to make it work, if she tells me everything. Well, she told me a lot, but to this day I feel as though she's held back on the details. I guess the question I have is, what do I do? I feel that more happened as this went on for months. If you fast forward to now, she's back to being cold towards me and yells every day that I come back in, and it's eating away at my soul. Did she tell me everything before? Did she cheat more than that? Am I stupid for believing her? Is it possible that I should be worried some of the kids aren't mine? And is she doing it again? Thanks, Reddit. I know I'm all over the place, but this bothers me to no end. <laughs> Any help would be appreciated. Thanks. Update on post. I didn't expect all the feedback that I'm getting. I want to say that I value everyone's advice. I think now I'm going to go through with paternity tests and SCD tests. Eventually, I'll talk to the lawyer about my options and what I can and can't do. One thing I don't think I explained it well, but I had to block Jack myself as she wanted to keep him as a friend. So far, I think I've realized that my mental health is not going to be great if I keep this dirt swept under a rug. I've talked to mother-in-law about what her daughter did to me. She didn't believe me at first. But after I said it two more times, she said, I can't believe I didn't raise her that way. And she said sorry to me. She then asked if I'm going to leave her daughter. And I said that I don't know. Thanks for all the support y'all have been giving me. I will give another update the further I go. Thanks, Redditors. Final update. Firstly, I want to thank all of you who gave me advice. I got tested and no SCDs. And the kids are mine. I decided that I was going to get a divorce and have since went through with it. My life has been so much better now since I'm not constantly worrying to anyone going through the same thing, I'd say, weigh out your options, but under no circumstances should you allow your significant other to run over you and to stand firm on the decisions you make. There is a better life after you get away from toxic people and find someone who cares about you. I don't think I'll ever get married again, but have since talked to a few women, but mainly focused on myself. Again, thank you for all the kind advice. I think it's concerning that the moment you said continue as you would normally, she re-added him as she didn't want to lose him. It sounds like she had already made her mind up by that time and might have been an indication at that point that the relationship was over. I'm glad you decided to go through with your divorce after all of that. You definitely shouldn't allow yourself to be walked over like that. Filed divorce papers today. If you read my posts, which I had since deleted, I have come to the realization that reconciliation is over. My D-Day was on January 20th. I wayward spouse said it was only an emotional affair. The affair perder was a cop and she... A veterinarian. She made it seem like she ended, but she hadn't. She says there was no physical contact, which I'm almost certain there was. 
Uh, the thought of someone else being in our bed having sex with her is like getting hit in the face with a brick. Even though she said she wanted to try and reconcile, her words and actions said otherwise. I just couldn't see the writing on the wall. I truly believe she doesn't want the stigma of being the one who ended it without even trying. I think she's waiting for me so she can say, I tried, but he didn't want to. Part of me wonders if I shouldn't file, just so she doesn't get off that easy. So I've contacted an attorney and have my consultation today. I did contact one after I first found out, but thought the $6,000 non-refundable retainer was a bit high. Other than the fact of losing her, the worst part is that this is giving her a quicker out so she can be with the affair partner that much sooner. Thank you for taking the time to read my story. I think what you're saying holds a lot of truth. It sure seems like she doesn't want to be the one who ended things, even though she did as soon as she made the choice to cheat. At this point, this isn't even worth worrying about what she's doing. The worst is over. You're moving on to a better future. Update. Looking back, I should have listened more. If you're struggling as to why an affair happened and your marriage is crumbling or ended, it may not be too late to change what happens next. My D-Day was three weeks ago. But know that reconciliation probably isn't in the cards right now. In my search on how to improve myself and fix our marriage, I was dear to This is How Your Marriage Ends by Matthew Frey. I'm only three chapters in and I can relate to everything he has wrote. I only wish I had read this sooner. He writes, broken relationships are mostly the results of things we do not know. Our marriage died a thousand deaths before it was actually over. In the last three weeks, my wayward spouse and I had more deep discussions than we had in the last five years. Whenever a problem arose, I either stepped it under the rug or handled it incorrectly, basically breaking her trust and confidence in that I don't respect her feelings and emotions. The worst part is that I didn't even know I was doing it. I strongly urge anyone who has been betrayed or even just struggling in their relationship with their significant other to read the aforementioned book. It may help you save your relationship you are in or one in the future. Edit. I have been taking unwarranted grief from many of you saying that I am blaming myself for her cheating. This is not the case. I'm taking responsibility for my part and our marriage crumbling, which resulted in her being unfaithful. I do, though, understand why she did it. Who knows? I may have two if roles were opposite. Let's see how the community feels about this one. Delta vs. Epsilon says, We're all human beings, flawed to our core. We're also very good at delegating responsibility for our actions elsewhere, taking zero personal accountability and placing blame for our faults on others. No doubt a failed marriage takes two. But betrayal, deceit, and infidelity is a single individual's choice. Your wife made a choice to be deceitful and then justify her actions via both of your shortcomings. While certainly you both have things to work on and areas to improve, you maintain your integrity, honored your vows, and loved. Accept your part in failed marriage and learn from it, but do not, in any way, take responsibility for someone's own personal choice to lie, deceive, and betray. Children can fall back on logic such as this, but she's a grown adult and made her own choices. Update finally had a good night's sleep. It has been a month since D-Day and had the worst birthday ever two days ago. My wayward wife has her affair partner for a year and still going on. I tried avoiding her and using the gray rock method. None of it was working and I keep falling back into the usual routine of talking. I'm sure she is loving it and having her affair partner and then things be all hunky-dory when she comes home. I created a few accounts on dating apps to play for the future. Last night, someone messaged me and we spent an hour and a half chatting last night. I felt so good that I was able to forget mostly about my soon-to-be ex-wife. Last night was the best night of sleep I had in 30 days. Maybe I'm rushing in and she may be desperate to find a guy, but for now, I will just enjoy it. We spent another hour and a half chatting this morning. I don't know though, can it work with a 39-year-old and me at 54? I just feel so old when looking at her and wonder how I will be judged if we have a relationship. I don't think you'll know if something is worth it until you give it a try. Jump in and have faith again. It's going to hurt, but we can't dwell on what the ex is doing or who they're doing and if they're happy or not. Just continue to focus on you. Live your life. What are your thoughts? Next up, an OP looking for the right questions to ask. Are there questions I should not ask my husband about his affair to protect myself? Last night was D-Day, or so I thought. Husband sat me down after we put our sons, ages one and a half and four, to bed and told me he has been having a three-year affair. I met the woman once, years ago. She grew up with my husband and was one year behind him in school. I know who she is. I know this should not be relevant, but she is very beautiful, intelligent, and a charismatic woman. I am intelligent, but not beautiful or charming. I guess I should mention that we have a debt bedroom. I do not like sex, 
and I don't feel sexual attraction. My husband is very sexual. I can't get it out of my head. The two of them having intense, passionate sex. This evening, I get a Facebook message from Ms. Verbarder. She said that she is remorseful for her part in the affair. She also said that she threatened to expose the affair to me, and that it was wrong, and she was sorry. So, my husband came clean not out of guilt or remorse, but because he wanted me to find out from him, not from the affair partner. I haven't asked many questions. In my head, I want to ask him what the intimate details are. Are there things I should not ask to protect myself? Let's see what the community offers in advice. Inner working 9343 starts us off. Three years? This is all relationship. It's definitely a problem that she had to threaten to expose him for him to tell you. Doobie replies, I do wonder what prompted her sudden attack of conscience. Did he pull the, I'll leave my wife for you card, and now she's suddenly realizing you was stringing her along? I don't know. I just don't know. Inner working 9343 replies back, You should probably find out. Get each other's stories and see if the versions line up with each other. I know you have a dead bedroom, but you should still get an STD test because of how long this affair was. Some diseases like HBV can take years to pop up. You should also look into counseling. This is traumatic for you. The OP replies again, I don't want to find out. I want to know every detail, but I can't go and search for answers because I'm afraid I can't handle what I learn. No Revolution 8474 wants to say, Why do you have a dead bedroom? Nimu Art responds, OP said she doesn't like sex. This is valid, but was bound to be a huge issue in their marriage and is something both spouses should have worked on. No Revolution 8474 replies again, I say let the husband go so he can be happy with his new partner. You don't want to have sex with him. He wants to have sex. Thick Boy 2019 thinks, Only person in 50 comments to actually ask this, as everyone else glossed over it. OP doesn't like sex, not attracted to her husband sexually. Am I the only one that thinks that she broke her vows first? Forced celibacy and unilaterally changing the dynamic of a marriage. Suspicious Weekend 284 has this to say. Three years is a long time. She must have threatened because she wants more from him. She wants him. Looking at the ages of your kids, this is all when one child was a year old and he had another child whilst in the affair. This speaks mountains about both of them. She's not remorseful or anything. She wanted to expose the affair as part of him exiting the relationship with you. There's something more. She didn't think about your kids when she started the affair and she must have realized that he was not going to leave you and now there's something major on her side. Remember, mistresses are just as toxic as your husband. Wow, OP. This is definitely not something you want to hear. Perhaps if her partner found out that he was cheating on her as well. Maybe your husband isn't just seeing her, but he's seeing other women simultaneously. Or maybe the affair partner wants to take things further, and they can't do that while you're in the picture, OP. Either way, I think you have to get some answers for closure's sake. You obviously don't have to ask anything right away. Take your time. But I definitely think some answers might help you. It might also give you more fuel to the fire to really let him go and move on. Thoughts? Is there anything you wouldn't want or wouldn't want to know? Thank you for joining us today in our space. Like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. We'd hate for you to miss out. If you want to listen to more stories from me, check out our lounge where I feature a larger variety of non-shitting related stories. See you there.